Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 4, Episode 10. So today we're going to be doing my review for the episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. But let's get on to the review. So overall, this episode was a blast. I really, really enjoyed it. I was intrigued throughout. I thought the way that they actually did the trial and everything else surrounding it was especially good. And I'm just so satisfied. I wasn't expecting too much. I felt like the trailers that they actually released prior to this episode didn't give the episode justice at all. And this was probably one of the best episodes of The Flash this season. So I was extremely happy with how the episode actually turned out. So leave your thoughts in the comments below because I want to see if you're just as happy about this episode. So we're going to be going through some plot points in this episode. So obviously I'm not going to be doing it chronologically. I'm going to be just pointing out the important stuff that you need to know and what we can theorize about and what we can just talk about regarding character and plot. So Team Flash established the link between Barry and what he said when he came out of the Speed Force and now we know what's sort of going on. So like we all predicted back in episode one, that was foreshadowing of what's to come. So now if we look back at it, when Barry said we're going to need more diapers, this line sort of confirms that Dawn and Don Allen are going to be coming sometime in the future. And considering that we've most likely met Dawn Allen already, that being the girl that everyone's theorizing about, and she was one of the waitresses at Barry's wedding. And I feel like this does sort of confirm it, but you can put a question mark after that. Considering that Barry has practically seen the future whilst he was in the speed force that's what we can infer from this new information that we've got and team flash are going to be trying to analyze the words that he actually spilled out because he said your honor i'm innocent and he said some other stuff but obviously we didn't get to hear it all because of time difficulties but obviously there was other stuff and they can show us it because cisco has the cctv recording but we're going to need more diapers i feel like dawn allen is going to be coming and we know she's back for an episode this season so I do hope she's back and I hope it's that person. So this information that they have newly found out that it links into what's going on now and the future, I feel like that's going to be the key to stopping the thinker so they're going to have to go back. Team Flash will have to analyse the information that they've got and maybe there will be a way of how they're going to defeat the thinker because I don't think they're going to do the thing that Savitar and Abracadabra said in season 3 just because I feel like that's a bit too easy for what's going to be happening and with the future being changed I think there's no doubt that the way that they defeat the thinker will be differently. So moving on so the trial of the flash I think this was the best thing about the episode it was really really intriguing if you guys watch NCIS Law and Order or something like that you will be heavily invested in this investigation and as we all knew Barry was practically screwed from the start and we'll talk about his prison sentencing later but the montage they opened with presenting the evidence it was especially good I really liked how they put those scenes together and just integrated it so we didn't have to see the full scenes but we got the gist of what's going on that Barry is practically screwed so moving on to Captain Singh so he knows inside that it's not Barry and he discusses why he actually chose Barry he was younger than everyone else and it was explained that Barry wanted to help victims rather than stop the criminals and that is a very very heroic thing and that's why he chose him so although Captain Singh had to testify against Barry due to Captain Singh finding Barry over DeVoe's body inside he knows that it wasn't Barry that he's been set up but Fallout he's the new meta in this episode I'm presuming this is one of the bus metas and it seems like by the end of the episode He's alive and he's well, but he doesn't have his powers anymore most likely so his powers was radiation So I feel like those bus metas the thinkers are going to use as many as he can But he won't be able to use the elongated man He won't be able to use fallout and this character kind of reminded me of electro from the amazing spider-man 2 His powers were very similar they looked very similar, but although he wasn't using electric powers, he was using radiation and he was doing it subconsciously, it still felt very similar the way that it was actually edited and the way that their powers worked initially because they both didn't know what they were doing. Ralph and Joe's storyline was pretty good. It was a short part of the episode. It's a way to start off the next episode because Ralph is going to be becoming the elongated man and he's going to be becoming that hero that he's supposed to be. So he teaches Joe, don't be dark Joe, and you have to do your job that you have in law rather than becoming the criminal you would just be as bad as the criminals and in this episode the mechanic actually did an amazing job I thought the actress did a brilliant job actually portraying these fake emotions being like 
all teared up and then suddenly she's back to normal. I thought it was spectacular what she actually did. So I haven't been a fan of her character in the past, but this episode really proved to me that she's a great character on the show as of now from this episode onwards. So probably the most interesting part of the episode apart from the ending was the Flash getting his new powers. So we got to see him experiencing this for the first time and he explained to us that he was running so fast that time nearly stopped. So whoever he's holding on to has some sort of connection and that's probably why Iris was able to talk to him. So it's a bit of an obscure power considering that really it shouldn't happen but I think this is going to play into something later down in the season because when they introduce new powers they always tend to use it and try to incorporate it into the story. So I really liked it. The way that it was actually portrayed in the episode with the CGI, the special effects were brilliant. I really really enjoy this scene. So it was just quite spectacular and Iris was about to reveal that Barry's the Flash and in the end obviously she didn't end up doing that she just sort of embarrassed herself but the trial of the flash as a whole was really good and it's quite similar to the comic books obviously Cecile was helping out she's the defense attorney of Barry and she was in the comics it was different because the reason why he was there was different from the comics he didn't kill the reverse flash so Caitlin becoming Killer Frost was a great scene I thought I would just quickly include that because the way that Harry and Cisco actually had to make her do it was just hilarious so Killer Frost faced off against Fallout and obviously we got an experience of what her powers are like and the transformation between Caitlyn and Killer Frost and I thought that was just great. So if you guys remember back in season 1 episode 1 when the weather wizard was facing off against the Flash Barry was running around him creating a vacuum around the villain and this seemed to be very influenced by that it was very very similar in the way it was shot and the way it was edited and it was really nice seeing that call back to season 1 because that's one of the most iconic scenes from back in season 1. So Earth 15 is confirmed to be a dead so we haven't been there, we haven't seen any characters from there, but Cisco sends the radiation from Fallout all the way into Earth-15. So it's just great hearing about other Earths and seeing what actually is happening there because we don't initially know until we're told. So now we're told that earth 15s a dead Earth, we can't expect to really go there unless we're going to have a massive battle there, which might be a bit of foreshadowing, so we'll have to wait and see until that. But by the end of the episode, Barry was found as guilty of murder, and the way that they actually incorporated the Flash and Barry montage between Captain Singh and the judge with a juxtaposition of Captain Singh praising the Flash, this one half of Barry, and the judge absolutely tarnishing on Barry's reputation as a CSI, I thought was brilliantly put together. So Barry's going to be in prison as we saw at the end of the episode, and at the end of the episode, Barry is inside Iron Heights in Henry Allen's cell. So that was a nice callback, and I was really surprised when I saw that, but it was very satisfactory. So Warden Wolf made his second appearance, and a lot of people have been theorizing about this because he's a character in the comics and we think that he might be helping DeVoe considering he's had quite a lot of emphasis on his character in the scenes that he's had and he's been very omniscient so I'm looking forward to what's going to be happening there at Iron Heights because next episode we're going to see a lot of Iron Heights. So anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Sharp breed.